Hey folks, Jonathan here, busy working on the Studebaker. Trying to get the charging system to work. Trying to do a little wiring. We've got the wires for the headlights done. And excuse all the red wires. Don't blame me, blame Harbor Freight. That's all they had. So what we've done is we cut into the, the original harness and went back far enough to where there's no rod or anything like that because it was covered. And I soldered everything in and uh, heat shrinked everything. Good to go. So we're working on some more of the wiring for the generator and running to the voltage regulator and all of that. And I'm hoping I can get this old oil fill out so I can replace that freeze plug behind it because that's the one that's leaking. And I think everything else is going pretty good. Now, I was having issues with my generator. You know, the, the way you test the generator is if you'll just uh, unhook the wires and take the belt loose, if you'll hook, uh, well, normally positive, but negative in this case because this is a positive ground car, if you'll hook it to your armature side of your generator, it turns into a motor and runs. Well, I couldn't get this one to turn at all. Uh, cleaned up the armature and just threw the hole while the car was running and got it nice and shiny and it still wouldn't run. Okay, so we put it on the ground and uh, I hooked up the six volts to it just could not get this thing to run it would barely try and that was about it so I decided that I wasn't going to uh, I, I took the brushes out cleaned them put them back in I, I mean I tried it just about everything but I decided that I was just going to try something different so I actually hooked it to 12 volt and you know hooked the positive to the ground and then hooked to my armature post and it went to spinning really good, really fast. So then I took it off, and then I hooked back to my six volt battery. And as you see, we're back running. So, don't know if it just needed to get spun or what it did, but the 12 volts got it going. Uh, not sure why, but it did. We're back to six volts and it's turning, working. So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna oil everything. And then we're going to uh, put it back on the car, and then we'll do some more testing, see if we can see if we're... Well, there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting voltage out of it, because it's, you know, of course, in here running. So, uh, I tried, while it was on the car, I checked everything and tried to get, you know, get it to charge, and I couldn't get any voltage out of it. So, hopefully, we've got it taken care of. It's running really well, so. Uh, let's get her back together and get her on, and I'll show you some other way. There's other ways of testing this. This is just one of the ways uh, we're going to test voltage on it next and see what it's charging. And you know, these when you when you test them without testing through the voltage regulator, you know, you can get up you know 36 to 40 volts out of these things. So. But uh, it's not good for them. You don't want to leave it at that. But we're just going to do a test on it to see what we're what we're getting anyway. Okay, so before we put the generator back on, I pulled all the oil fill, took out the freeze plug, as you can see, and now we're flushing the system out and uh, let it run there a few minutes and then uh, get the uh, oil fill back out of it. It presses in there pretty big on hard. So we'll get it back out and then we'll uh, get a new freeze plug in it. Then we can start doing our generator and our testing. Okay, so we're through flushing. I'm getting ready to get the tube back out, but we've got to get a inch and seven eighths freeze plug. Hopefully, I can get one local. Uh, I need to keep a better selection of them. So I might see if I can find an assortment that I can buy, put in the hardware store. Uh, it's a shame when you just need one. You got to go drive. Uh, well, just 20 miles total just to get a freeze plug. So there and back, but that's the way it goes. All right. Okay, luckily the parts store had one in stock. We'll do a little more cleaning up here. And we'll get that uh, fill back in and we'll get that generator on. Okay, next step. Now, remember that this is positive ground. So I've got a field actually grounded here to the positive, which is ground. So we've got our leads hooked up. And I'm going to check the power on here and 
see this is 2.9. If Noah gives it some gas, it'll go up. Right. Take it on up. See, it went all the way up to 20 volts. So we know we're charging again. So now, take the ground back off. And uh, we should be able to go ahead and hook up our uh, voltage regulator and we'll check and see if it's working right. Okay, it looks like our voltage regulator is working. Uh, it wasn't, I tapped on it and it went to working, so it just had the point stuck in it. Uh, you can watch the amp gauge. I have a little low, might have to idle it up a little bit, but right there, showing just a little bit of discharge, give it just a little bit of gas. It goes up. Full pressure, 40 pounds idle. check the voltage because I was worried because it was coming so far over but it's still only charging you know uh, less than seven volts all right we're getting there uh, I don't think the temperature gauge is working so it's electric but we'll work on that sometime okay we've still got to come up with a top radiator hose it's leaking that's why that water's running it's spark plug and the bottom was leaking up here where it clamps on but i did go ahead and order a new one and got it on the way and then we've still got the leak on the about right here but on the front side of the radiator that uh is going to be soldered which i think if i take this top panel out which has got some rust in but if i take this panel out of the top of it i think i can actually uh have a cap to the rubber's missing off this one but uh i think i can get down clean it and do it without even uh, taking the radiator out and uh, it's just one little puncture something actually went in and hit it so uh, I had Noah take the seat out and clean the inside out so the back floorboards are not bad at all and the center hump's really nice we just got some issues out here so what we're doing now is cutting two pieces of steel and I'm going to break them to go right here all the way forward on each side and we'll cut out what's there and then put them in and that'll give us something good to, to go from this uh, the bottom down here the A-pillar whatever you want to call it clear at the bottom to this one and that'll give us a good sturdy piece in and then we can come off that with the floor and we'll just come in wherever we need to and cut it out and replace it both sides back's going to be fine though I don't see any issues there so, all right, not as bad as I thought it was going to be inside, but we want to fix the floor enough to, to drive it a little bit. So I guess we've uh, determined that we're going to take this one to the next cruise in. I think we can, I've got all the parts coming. I've got a 1955 Chevrolet gas tank coming. We're going to be able to adapt it to it, and I'll show that on video. And uh, and the reason being is is. Uh, the thing, the only gas tank I found for this was I think 450, and I'm not sure if it was even for this. Uh, it might have been a, a different year or something. But anyway, I wasn't even interested in a price like that. So I found one. Uh, the 55 tanks are $72 free shipping, and then I bought the sending unit for the 55. Uh, it's a 12 volt setup, but I'm going to see how it works on this gauge uh, because the gauge, the the actual rheostat in the tank only works off grounding. I'm sure it'll be a different arm, but we'll try it either way. And uh, so we'll get that tank on, and I've got all the, all the brakes coming, uh, brake hoses, wheel cylinders, master cylinder. Uh, we'll get all the brake situation taken care of. The only thing we really got to do is get the clutch working. Well, clutch pedal's not wanting to release because there's you know it's just so so much uh, trash in the uh, bushings and rusted and just needs cleaned and greased and worked out. And uh, I haven't, like I said, done this window yet. We've got to get this softened up some. And uh, we'll get the window in. And uh, 
Looks like someone had put some sealer on it at one time. But like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this rubber is separate from the back rubber. I haven't taken this trim piece off yet, but it's looking like it's separate. So we'll take this one piece out and maybe heat it up, put it in some water, hot water or something. There's a lot of cracking in it, but we're going to do the best we can do to get it in there. And uh, really the... Uh, believe the glass well this one the rubber the way it is you know we may have to put the window into this I don't know the rubber's made to where it's so thick on the inside I don't think that window could be put on from the outside I think that window comes in from the from the inside and out I'm pretty sure that's what it's gonna do so I think that's how we're gonna do it because the uh, lip on this side is not very much the lip on the inside is really tall so. Put a piece of you know rope around it and pull it in. I think it. I think we can do it. No problem. So anyway, we'll get on that and get this floor straightened out to where it's at least drivable. You know, I'm not going for originality. I'm not going for you know looks. I want to seal it up good. Okay, we got some new panels bent up, just like they're supposed to be. And we're going to cut the old ones out, but we wanted to put them in first. And she bent them up exactly like the floor was originally. Now this rocker goes up there. We'll have to redo the top of it. But this will strengthen it up. And what I'll do is come in here and scribe it and cut it out. And we'll weld it in good. And get it welded into the back of the body here. It's supposed to be a tab that comes down. I think it's still on the other side. But there's a tab that comes down that welds it in here. So we'll brace that in. And then we'll uh, measure out what we need to do for the floor and start getting some of it in. But this will strengthen this uh, edges up really well. Is that one going to work? Yep. You want to show them the tab? You just got to do some cutting out. Yeah, that one's got to sit at the tab on the front. That'll actually go up under that tab, but we've got some cutting out before we get in there. All right. Show you more later. Okay. So I think we're going to call it a day. We've got the other one sitting down in place so we can mark it. And uh, once we get that done and start putting the floor in, it'll come together pretty quick. And we'll uh, we'll put some details in it to strengthen the pieces up just like they did from the factory. I don't know whether I'm going to feed roll or if I'm going to hammer them out just like they got them, but one or the other. And we'll just start tying everything together. And uh, it's... Uh, we are going to cut the old rust out. This is not going to be a back to factory look, but uh, it'll be close. Uh, and I'll take this off so you can see what I'm talking about. Come up an inch and eighth here. Come into an eighth. Down and then out. That's about an inch. So I will show you what this looked like before. If I can get this out. So basically what we're doing is going back the exact same way. This piece here just goes down to an inch. This used to come up, this rocker, and have a lip on it that actually welded in here. It was spotted in. So we'll figure something out on that rocker when we get done. But this is what we're replacing. One inch up, two and an eighth in, down, and then back in. And I wanted to do it back the same way as this because it strengthens it up really well. And we won't have to worry about any issues weight-wise getting in and out putting weight on it and uh, like I said the rocker is good on the outside but up here where it mounts it's got some issues so we're going to have to figure out what to do on that and then uh, like I said everything else is pretty much uh, pretty easy to do and uh, this is a little heavier I don't remember what gauge this is but it's heavier than what uh, what's on there I think it's 16 gauge so anyway I'm not sure what this is for, unbolts, but we'll figure it all out as we go. But we've got a key switch in it, it starts from inside. Uh, we hope to have this thing moving and going next week sometime. So, Alright, appreciate everybody watching. Till next time, bye. Bye.